Hi, everybody. I'm here for part two of the interview excerpts uh, that I did with my teacher, Berta Valdez, also known as La Golondrina. And in our first episode, we covered a few points from my notes from, tr from some transcribed interviews. And in this one, we'll cover some other points that I think are interesting and, and worth looking back on and use it as kind of a, a way to remember her in a fond way for me and to introduce you to some of her teachings. Today, I'm gonna cover what she told me about light and dark how that, uh, what that had to do with curanderismo and brujeria, uh, the use of water in healing and protection, and finally, the use of uh, imagination with colored light. So I'll begin by talking a little bit about what she had to say about the light and the dark. She constantly spoke about the light spiritual world, about our alignment with it, both in our work individually uh, having to do with our soul evolution as well as in working with others as a healer she talked about brujeria the the dark side of curanderismo so technically curanderismo is only a healing art it only has to do with helping people but there's a dark side to that power that goes along with it and we find that in brujeria Brujeria can be translated, some people would translate it as witchcraft, but I don't think it should be confused in any way with Wicca, and that's why that translation of it is a little bit diff difficult. So brujeria has to do with the manipulative side of using personal healing power. And the way that, that Berta explained it to me is that as a healer, that you develop you develop this healing power and the problem is that people will come to you and they'll ask you to do something on their behalf so they might come to you and say oh well you know i have this neighbor who i have this problem with and i, I want you to do something to cause him or her harm or they may even ask for something like love magic i want to attract this particular person the problem, according to Berta, is that there's a line in the sand. And the minute that you take a step over that line, you become a brujo or a bruja. That our ability to heal depends upon our alignment with the light side. And that it's very seductive to want to go over to the other side. And what she said was, you know, it, it might not seem like such a big deal. It's sort of like dipping your toe in it by just helping somebody who wanted your help. But the point is, the moment that your work goes from helping someone on behalf of him or herself to helping somebody by getting them to do something that manipulates another human being, that's when you have taken that step from curanderismo to brujeria. I mean, and whether you're a, a curandero or a curandera or not, I guess we could uh, we could say that this is kind of similar to the choices that we make in life. That when we manipulate others, we're walking down a slippery slope. So she was very clear about that. About the work should always be aligned with light and with what she called the light spiritual world. Um, now, I hope you'll excuse me. I'm going to be looking down at uh, at some of my notes to share some of these excerpts of things that she talked about. And one was the use of water in two ways. Water used for personal healing and water also used as protection when a person is healing another person. So this is what, what Berta said. When you have an illness, you put water in a glass and then you speak over the top of it and say, in the name of the Lord, bless this water. And bless blessed master teachers and the light spiritual world. I ask you to put in this water the medicine that I need because you can see me from the inside and the outside. I'll be sleeping. Please do this for me. Thank you so much for hearing me. 
and then you put the water on the side on your night table next to you and put something over it so that bugs don't land in it and then just go off to sleep in the morning when you wake up you drink the water and that then becomes your medicine for healing so that's one way to use water another way to use water that she explained was in protection so that you don't take on any of the negative energies from the person that you're working with and in order to do that she would put a glass of water under the the chair that she was sitting on and i'll explain this in her words again we use the same process as we just described we say in the name of the lord bless this water in the meantime i'm busy here you're going to protect me from the evil and the bad wishes that others might have for me and any of the people around. Then I put it underneath the chair. And she explained that that was the way Dona Nati taught her. There was a, a church, a, spiritual, a spiritualist church that she went to in Mexico. And there was a medium there named Dona Nati who taught her a lot about healing and Dona Nati actually used three glasses of water she would put them underneath her chair in the form of a triangle and what the water does is it absorbs the negative energy it absorbs the poisons it absorbs any of the negative intentions of others anything that could could potentially be harmful to you in the work with someone else that water will absorb uh, Dona Nati, she said, actually would have two men on either side of her, plus the triangle of glasses of water underneath her in order for that protection to take place. And what Berta said was that water is like a connection, like a wire for the energy. So it's very, very important to be surrounded by water. She also talked about light in one's home. And what she said was, we have to have light all around us in a good environment. We should also burn incense. And she said that there is the concept of like begetting like. So these are her words. What I tell the people when they invite me into their houses to clean it up, and I should explain a little bit about that. Uh, she's talking here about a, a house limpia, a cleansing of a person's physical space. Uh, because sometimes there are entities that would attach there and she would be called upon to go there and clear things out for the family. She said, sometimes I go to houses and they're dark. They don't let the sun in. And that's a problem because of black entities. They like bad odors and darkness. So we have to get rid of these, those two points first. We have to have a good environment and light in the house. And then she talked a little bit about, uh, she talked about the types of prayer that she would do once she was doing it. And she would talk to the, she would talk to the entities that were there. And I'll, I'm going to read to you a little bit about what she had to say about that in just a moment. I also asked her about the light and the dark and about people who were healers and how many of them in South Texas, she lived in, in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and she said that out of about 500 curanderos, and that's both the men and the women healers, she said that in her estimation, there were probably about four who were working on the light side, that the others would manipulate people. They would offer to do things on behalf of a client that would manipulate someone else. So one of the things that she said, now getting back to uh, these, these entities that would arrive in people's homes, she said that they, these are entities that come from the astral world that often don't even know where they are, don't even know that they have the freedom to go somewhere else. So here's how she would remove these spirits. In her words, these spirits, they think they're alive. They come into a house, maybe where a woman might have been killed, 
And the people that are living there now, they would have problems. This is a specific case that she's talking about. And even the little girl, she was having problems because they would see this woman. Now, the woman thought that she was alive and that it was her house. It was a suffering spirit. So I went around with a purple candle and I prayed and I told the people, I told her the spirit that these people are living here. And then I kept praying, praying and praying. And when I reached the place where the, the death had happened, where the killing had happened, very something very strange happened. I felt a feeling in my back. I could feel that the spirit was angry and I talked to her. And I gave her a blessing and I told her, okay, you have to follow your evolution because you're not actually alive. You're on another plane. Follow the light, be happy. I give you my peace, my love and everything that I can. And then we walked around the house and then I left the candle in the kitchen. No problem anymore. But that's the kind of spirit that they are in the spiritual world. They think that they're here in this world, but they're not. They don't know why they are suffering. So in this way, I was able to release that spirit and send it off on its way. So that's another one of the, the many ways that, that Bertha worked with people on doing limpias, both for individuals and doing limpias for homes. And her teachings had very much to do with this notion of light and dark. So I leave you with that today, and I am ever so grateful, of course, for the time that I got to spend with La Golondrina. Thanks for listening.